Hi, and welcome to our Friday webinar. We are on with Dr. Tom Tolley today with another excellent episode of Ask the Vet. Welcome, Dr. Tolley. Well, well, thank you, Laura, and happy to be here. I'm just anticipating another excellent episode. I know this is going to be good. <laughs> Well, we're looking for a lot of uh, uh, very uh, challenging uh, questions as we normally get on this uh uh, this uh, webinar, and uh, and I want to thank you again for uh, leading the way. All right. Well, hey. So before we get this this thing going, before we get started, um, I just have to say that uh, let's see here, things have been a little bit bananas lately. Bananas, just crazy bananas, but crazy uh, in a good way because I just I, I like I like bananas. I like bananas. I'm gonna have but my imagine bananas. Is, oh, hey, banana Friday. Banana Friday. <laughs> <laughs> My life, right. <laughs> so, so I got this baby in the mail and I got to do, I, I always wanted to do this. I see people on YouTube do this all the time an unboxing. So I'm going to do an unboxing. So everyone who's, who's on with this already, you're going to be um, witness to my first unboxing on air. Here we go. So, all right. I mean, this is rare. This yeah. is rare to be on a webinar where there's an unboxing. Coming from the La Fibre company. So we know it's something okay. different. And, uh, okay. Okay. Here we go. I love it. I love it already. Because the first thing that I see is this really cute sticker of a cockatiel banana merging together. That's just adorable. Well, look, I mean, I see that, and I like it a lot. I like and it a lot. Just to show how much Lefebvre appreciates their customers, a thank you card, a postcard. Well, Can back it up that? a little bit. Back it up. Yeah, oh, yeah. There we go. Can you see that? It says, uh, thank you. Oops, sorry, my camera. It's, okay, come on. There we go. Wait, uh, trying here. Okay, there's the postcard. Now for the fun, good stuff here. Um, there we go. Paper. Oh, I got two of them. <laughs> sorry, I'm all excited. It's like a double rainbow. <laughs> I mean, yes, okay. this is so this truly is an unboxing because... Yes. The it is oh my goodness okay are we ready for this this is the newest flavor offering from the fever it is banana nutri berries <laughs> and since it's the 50th anniversary it comes in this really cool commemorative tin gold it's a gold tin uh -huh. that is very and nice if there was a ray of light coming out it would be coming out right now um look at this it's got banana nutri berries in it banana nutri sorry my screen there we go banana nutri berries in there packed packed in there and I haven't seen this tin in person and I am very excited. So it says, uh, it says carrying it's 50 years, um, carrying for animals since 1973, La Fibre Company, banana nutri berries. And this one is for small birds. And on the back, it has, it has the, um, uh, the La Fibre logo of the bird, the artistic bird flying. Okay, sorry, my tin's not, there we go. It's, it's so good. I see it. I, I okay. did see a glimpse of the are, bird flew away though. There's two of them. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Uh, there we go. Another beautiful tin. Also, this one's for the larger parrot. This is the parrot size. Okay, come on. Come on, computer. Uh, is it between the feathers? It's between yeah, the Yeah, there we go. Okay, right there. Hi. Uh -huh. anyway, there you go. There's the tin. And on the back, I'm going to carefully turn it so that it doesn't go off the screen here. And there's the beautiful little bird logo. Um, and then this is filled with the newest flavor. Banana nutri berries. I kind of want to eat some myself, but I won't because I, I I have my bananas here. But that's kind of cool. Um, and, and I know that people have ate them, you know, before at conferences, not not at uh, the Avian Conference, at but booths, at other right? conferences, mm -hmm. and they have survived. Yeah. Uh, well, they're all human grade, so yeah. Um, yeah so this is so exciting. Oh, there we go. So we got the uh, there's the uh, that's the banana nutri berries inside. So oh, awesome gold tin, and it's a collective. It's a collector's item. Um, yeah, I like the sticker. Oh my gosh, I have to show that again. Sorry, if you're just joining us, I just put it in that. front of you. Put it in. Yeah, there it is. It looks there's like a little banana cockatiel. It is a banana teal. Who <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, what is that? A, a Lutina? What? 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 With, That's um, a rare color mutation that probably is worth a lot of money. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm not going to look at a yellow cockatiel the same again. I'm just gonna <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> All right. So there we go. That is our special unboxing. And um, and as a bonus, I just got word. We confirmed this. So the box comes filled with this wonderful, can you see it brown? Put it there in front go. of you. The packing paper you could use for your bird to either play with or to line the cages with because I got the word on the street is this is the same packing paper that um the Lefebvre's use and their own birds personal and their private cages so there you go that, that's it. yeah you make use Good. of uh, well whole... thank you now now uh no very exciting a new flavor banana excellent there mm -hmm. we go ah there we are there we are um, there we go. And guess what? Um, you know, it's going to happen at the end of this. We're going to do a giveaway. So guess what we're going to be giving away? <laughs> so, I like yeah. it. I like it. I like it a lot. Fantastic. Right. There we go. New flavor, banana Nutriberries. Um, but thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Okay. So we should get this webinar with a question. I have one for you and I need to just get my bearings here. Okay. I was so excited about the band new bears. Here we go. Um, and just a reminder, if you're just joining us and if you're first time viewer, uh, to use the Q and a button and not the chat feature. Okay. So here we go. Are you ready for this one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is about a two-year-old cockatiel. So you can have cockatiels, a DNA yeah. test male has always been on a good diet, neutral berries, et cetera. Uh, presented with yellow urates, but otherwise the bird is normal. The vet is testing for liver, chem panel, CBC, gram stain, bacteria. Didn't think it was chlamydia and opted not to test for it since the poop doesn't quite look like that. The exam itself, he looks like he's in good shape. So they're saying he's acting fine. They noticed him losing feathers lately, but the doctor said his feathers look good. So he's molting now, so that might explain it. And he's also been hormonal. So what are your thoughts on what's going on with this cockatiel, who's a, a DNA confirmed male? Well, uh, <clears throat> the very good observation, very good question. Uh, a lot of information in that uh, question uh, that provides to kind of an overview. So you have a, a yellowish colored urates in uh, what that could be uh, is a, kind of with the with the urates and the urine coming from the cloaca there could be some uh really contamination fecal contamination that is is causing those urates to be uh kind of a yellowish color um <clears throat> uh, birds can uh have a if there's a liver issue uh there there can be a yellowish to greenish uh, or greenish yellow, I would say, not necessarily yellow, but it uh, could be uh, if you have what we call Billy Verdon urea. Uh, birds don't make Billy Rubin. Um, in, in, so their end product for their, from their liver and bile is, is uh, Billy Verdon. And so that could be yellowish to green kind of a, a greenish tinge and that is is sometimes indicative of a of a, a liver issue mainly an inflammation and is kind of one of the top reasons if there's an inflammatory uh, condition in it but other things can cause with the yellow if the bird is uh, um, acting normally there's a number of uh, different things like I said there could be fecal contamination associated with it uh there uh as as you as mentioned uh the animal's on a good diet it's been losing some feathers but at this time of year uh you will have molting occur um and and my birds are molting right now uh my birds are also hormonal right now uh although cockatiels can as people know uh they can be hormonal year around <laughs> and it's like whoa, when are we going to slow down here? And it never happens. Um, but, but in general, uh, that's not, that can, not, not unusual uh, for that to be. Uh, so with the, the feather loss, if you don't, when, when there's, there's feather loss, it's always important to remember that birds are molting. Uh, parrots molt uh, quite often. 
I find that they molt more and they'll have more feathers that are molted in the spring and in the fall, okay? Uh, and, and so <clears throat> that's when they're kind of losing feathers for the heat that they've put on for the, the winter and then by, vice versa uh, in, the, uh, in the fall, kind of preparing for that. But they'll molt year round. And, uh, and so, so what's, what, when is it a problem with feather loss? And, and birds are fastidious groomers. They're always grooming. So they'll be grooming and they'll pull out little feathers. And it's not meaning that their feather destructive behavior or feather picking. It's just that they'll pick them out as they're, they're molting. So <clears throat> it's a problem when there is a, an area on the body where there should be feathers and there are no feathers. That's when that's a problem. If the feathers are all, you know, the feather coat on the bird, if you will, is looks good and feathers cover the body, then for the, you know, for the most part, you're, that's no, no problem. So if this little cockatiel has feathers uh, and you'll see little pin feathers, which are little blood feathers, really, uh, on the head, around the crest of the, the head, you can see them uh, when the new ones are growing in, then th that's normal. Uh, now, with a, a, to, I don't know if there's mention of any, like a complete blood count or, a, uh, uh, and that is something that would be uh, kind of fulfill that, that, that um, physical exam to try to get information of what's going on inside. And I always mention this and some, you know, some of the people on the, on the webinar will uh, know that I mentioned that we can look and see what's going on on the outside, but we need to get the blood sample to see what's going on inside. Uh, just like when humans go to the physician. Um, and so, uh, that, that kind if, if everything looks, if there's no other, uh, problems, then, uh, a complete blood count would be helpful in determining that. So, yeah. there you so go. just to interject, uh, it, they did state that the, sorry, I think I might've left this out. The vet is testing for liver, chem panel, CBC, gram stain bacteria. So yeah, like, there you know, go. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. It seems like the bird's in excellent care. Yep. Yeah. All right. There we go. Very and, good. good question. Thank you. Oh, okay. Here, here we go. Uh, we got one about a budgie from Jane. Nine-year-old female budgie has an issue with her left leg foot. She does not have bumble foot, but several years ago, she began holding up her left leg when perching. So the vet put her on Medicam, which seemed to help, but then she began using the leg foot normally again. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, because she, because again. So currently she seems to have a weaker grip in that foot. And when she stands on a flat surface, her toes will curl up under. Um, doesn't seem to bother her, but let's see. Uh, when she's on the perch, her toes look to be gripping around it normally. Uh, they took her back to the vet, and the vet said that some areas of the leg, the leg slash foot looked thicker than they should. And they also thought that there may be a gout issue, although there's no visible, is it top five? T O P? Toe five. Toe five. T O P H I. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so she's taking um, allop allopurinol, uh, allopurinol. Mm -hmm. gabastin, gabatin, uh, and medicam. And yeah. they want to know, can this be caused by pressure on a nerve from a tumor or other nerve issues? Um, so what would you do if you saw a bird standing on a flat surface with his toes curled, curled up? Like, what would you think? First thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent question. Excellent question. And, uh, and this is one thing that uh, we do we do see uh, in budgies and, uh, and it's something that is uh, rather, uh, and, and I like this term, not uncommon, right? It's almost like a double negative, right? Not uncommon. Uh, so we see it from time to time. And uh, with little budgies, uh, they, they are susceptible just like any other animal to, to cancer, uh, neoplasia. Uh, and, 
in, in one of the uh, classical, classical disease conditions of budgies is the one leg lameness where the budgie is not perching on one leg and holding it out or it's, it's, it's kind of on the side, but it cannot use that leg and it's perching on the other leg. Well, <clears throat> when you have a, a bird that it cannot use one leg, we'll call it, let's say, just uh, paralysis. It's like the, the leg has paralysis and it cannot use it and it's perching on it. You look and see what could possibly be causing you, uh, causing that problem. Um, and, and you can start with uh, uh, trauma, you know, where the bird uh, may have uh, had the leg or foot caught in the cage and, and there was uh, trauma uh, to the muscle or the fracture even. Uh, and then, uh, then you look at uh, what the other, other real possibility uh, would be, and that is, uh, 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 as you mentioned, uh, a tumor in the body um, that is uh, growing and um, putting pressure on that, um, on that nerve. Uh, any type of mass, uh, even an egg, a, a large egg or something of that nature uh, within the hen uh, could possibly cause um, uh, a pressure on the nerve that would um, cause that that to uh, leg to be uh, non would be not be able to use that leg. Uh, so with that, uh, with those kind of top three um, causes for that, um, and and we're really looking at trauma and and can and the tumor as the the top two. Most of the budgies that come in with unilateral leg lameness uh that there's no known history of trauma it's it it would be um a tumor or cancer and 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 i, I say no known history because sometimes things happen and you don't know about it and that's why we do that so <clears throat> very possibly that that would be the case what's interesting about this is that it, the cancer is not going to respond to meloxicam. It's not going to respond to allopurinol. Uh, it's not, you know, it's, so the interesting thing about this case is that it started uh, a year or so ago, at least, and the birds seem to get better. Well, with cancer, if it's not treated and there's really very little that you could treat because when you're saying, well, what, what is this, <clears throat> uh, what type of cancer are we talking about here? We're usually talking about kidney cancer or we're talking about a reproductive, an ovarian cancer or a testicular cancer because the testicle and the, uh, <clears throat> and the uh, ovary are uh, located right in the, uh, <clears throat> right below the kidney. Um, on that, um, as we, as we look, uh, on the, um, <clears throat> the, the, uh, <clears throat> and I'll show you here. When you have the, the, uh, the kidney, of a bird, uh, it's basically like like this, um, but of course it's 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 in reverse. But <clears throat> but if the bird was facing this way, okay, this is the the rear of the bird. This is the head of the bird. Uh, in in most parrot species, it's kind of the kidney has like three lobes, and it's right against the back. And then you have right here, you have the gonad, either the testicle or you have the uh, ovary. And then this is the adrenal gland. 
So you see how close the gonad, the testicle or the gonad is to the kidney. It's right there in the body. And so if you have a tumor that affects the kidney or you have a tumor here, there's nerves that run along the, the back of the bird as it goes down to the leg. And you have a kidney on the right side, the left side, and depending on, and, the, and, and for the most part, uh, on the, um, uh, the, the birds, uh, what you're, what you're going to, uh, have is the, uh, on the birds, the, the ovary is, uh, on the, the left side and the testicles are on the right and left. You only have one functional ovary. So this is where the, the cancer would be. And then, and then it would, it will impinge or put pressure on the nerve to cause it to go uh, for the bird to be lame. And so if you don't treat it, it's just the birds gonna, will eventually die and it's not going to recover. Uh, the cancer is going to, uh, unless there's divine intervention, it's just not gonna go away with this, these types of cancers. There are certain cancers, uh, melanoma for instance, that that have a spontaneous recovery in humans. But, um, but in this, this case, it wouldn't. So uh, it, it wouldn't make sense for this bird to have a tumor. Um, and there's not much we can do uh, for tumors at this point in the little budgies that weigh between 25 and 40 grams. Uh, now, as far as uh, the as far as the, the gout is concerned, uh, that's uric acid crystals uh, that uh, form tophi. And tophi are just, if you've had budgies and you can look at, at pictures online of uh, budgies with gout, and this is called articular gout, where you have like white little pockets uh, in, uh, on, uh, right under the skin on the legs and the feet. And you can see this, and, and, and it's not uncommon in budgies. Um, but uh, the uh, allopurinol, uh, again, it's not the, uh, there's not any, there's not that I know of any uh, known research that has validated its use in birds, but allopurinol and colchicine is used in humans. Uh, to reduce the uric acid level in humans that have gout uh, to uh, where there's, there's not episodes where this uh, occurs and there's significant inflammation. But I know that there are veterinarians that believe and have used allopurinol and feel like the birds do uh, improve. So uh, it doesn't hurt to do that because it may uh, in fact, have uh, benefit. Um, but you say you don't see the tophi, but there is another form of, of gout uh, called visceral gout. And visceral gout is the organs where there's uric acid that goes into the, the organs, and it can be fatal in birds. Gout can be fatal uh, if it affects the kidneys abnormally, uh, uh, adversely. Um, and and uh, they can have renal, uh, and eventually renal failure. It can, uh, these uric acid deposits can affect the heart, uh, you know, the lining of the heart too. So, so um, at this point, without any evidence of articular gout, but you're getting treated for that, you're on anti-inflammatory medications, you're on pain management with the gabapentin, I believe. And, and so uh, it appears that um, the, you know, the little bird is being uh, well managed at this point and has, has seemingly um, had, it, it has improved uh, based from what it was initially. Um, but uh, again, if it was a traumatic incident and there would be possible joint uh, issues uh, that would, uh, whether it's the hip, the knee, the ankle, um, that it would, um, 
it may reach a point where it only gets improves to a certain amount and and uh, and doesn't get any better to where it was. So there you go. Okay, um, we got another one about a cockatoo. Um, this is from Maria, a cockatoo with hormonal problems. So uh, they've actually been getting, I guess, conflicting advice about this, um, about her diet. So any advice would be appreciated. So we got a hormonal cockatoo, um, cockatoo and, and wondering about their diet. So diet mm -hmm. and hormones, what's the relationship with that? Mm -hmm. So yeah. hormonal cockatoo and, you know, the, the, the <clears throat> I'm not sure what the conflicting information is regarding the diet. We, you know, uh, again, we, we've talked about the diet, uh, uh, as it, uh, relates and, and what my recommendations are. And that's just one opinion. There you go. And, uh, I, I, believe that uh that uh, a pelleted diet is a a good diet uh for a base diet and that uh to diversify uh the diet and uh and if you can uh and, and are able to to provide uh some fresh uh vegetables uh fruits as treats uh, that you can clean, that's good. If you can't, that's fine too. Um, but uh, not all birds are going to eat everything. And uh, and I, I, I'll never forget, we had maybe 20 Blue Front Amazons in back in the day, Laura, uh, <laughs> when uh, there was still uh, importation going on. They all had upper respiratory infection that we were uh, we were treating uh, upper respiratory disease, and we were treating those, and and we all we fed them uh, a, kind of a diverse diet. It would have been great to do a little study on this, but we had uh, uh, a little uh, a cheese, we had uh, apples, we had uh, oranges, uh, we had uh some uh, different things and i can tell you that those 20 birds each one ate something different mm. you know i mean uh they some of them ate the same thing but you could see what some of them liked and what others didn't and so it wasn't consistent they all didn't go for one thing and so uh there's individual tastes that these birds have and I think that probably a number of our attendee, uh, you know, those that are on this webinar can say, yes, that I, I can tell you they have different tastes, uh, certain species and what have you. So uh, my thoughts uh, on this is that the hormonal doesn't necessarily correlate to me to the, to the uh, diet. The diet is the overall, you are what you eat, right? And so if you provide the best you know, diet that you can and a diverse diet, because we don't know what the daily recommended requirements are for each of these parrot species that we, we, ha we, we, we love we do, and, and keep, we don't know that. Um, there are some that we do, but very few. And, and, and so to try to meet those demands is the best way is to provide a, a diet that has, uh, say, uh, that has vitamins and minerals that are impregnated that they are eating, okay? And that would be, say, like, you know, the pelleted diets, right? Or, you know, you have Nutra pellets and mm -hmm. you have Nutra berries that have that in there uh, for Lefebvre products. And then, <clears throat> then, then also what you're looking at is, like I said, a seed mixture, not necessarily that you change out daily, but you change out on a regular basis so that that gives the bird a chance to uh, eat the seeds that it likes initially and then start eating the seeds that it doesn't like. 
if you feed a bird to change out the seed every day, it's going to only eat the seeds it likes. And then that's going to be a kind of a mono diet. Um, and, uh, and so you, you want to, uh, consider that. Um, and then if you are, uh, and, and then I am, uh, not, uh, and if you want for vitamin supplementation, um, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, that's, there's nothing, uh, wrong with that. And that is something that you can do if you want to assure that uh, the bird is getting everything there. But the diet is for the overall health, the yin and the yang of the bird, you know, the, just, uh, it, just for like for us, yeah. you know, it's going to help us, our immune system to, to, to be able to uh, be as healthy as possible, to, to fight off disease conditions, and pathogenic organisms that are trying to infect us. And that's what we're doing with the bird. The hormonal aspect is a, is a, is a, um, a different, um, uh, you know, I, I don't think it is as uh, uh, connected to the diet uh, unless you want to say the bird is just as healthy as possible. And that uh, through the nutrition, and that is by getting the recommended uh, and, and providing the, the recommended nutritional um, requirements for that bird the, the best way we know how. So that's, that's you know, on that. Okay. All right. That was, yeah, I guess there's no like uh, chocolate and, and red wine. Let's see. Or like, from a, like no, no, <laughs> yeah, for a bird world. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so next question is uh, from Marion about an eight-month-old budgie who is taking taking um, okay and enrofloxacin is that right and enro yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's and, called and Batril. It's called Batril. It's a Batril. Kind of, the, then, the, the the brand uh, trade name. Yeah. Okay, and then also they're taking um. Nice statin uh, twice a day. Um, so it's about uh, 10 days and he's about to come off an antifungal, off the antifungal, but will stay on the antibiotic for a total of 21 days. So they want, an, uh, they want to give him Benebec uh, pro probiotic, but they're not sure when to provide this during his current um, prescription. Um, and uh, can you offer any guidance on this? So he's getting better, by the way. Um, one of the concerning symptoms that he had is that he couldn't fly well after being uh, an excellent flyer. So they want to know when they can start, um, I, I guess, uh, offering him some, some where to go, Benebec um, probiotic. Yeah, they can do that now. <clears throat> they, can, they can provide him the Benebec <clears throat> while they're treating him. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, yeah. And, and, and what it is is, uh, again, and I'm going to go... <clears throat> theoretically, um, is that the, the Benebac is a probiotic, um, uh, similar to a line or, you know, it's something, uh, a human product to try to, um, promote one, uh, the growth of good bacteria within the GI tract, uh, the intestinal tract. And, uh, and two, uh, and in, in, by doing that, it's uh, in, in also an environment uh, to try to uh, stimulate an environment for the good bacteria to grow. While what it does is you're inoculating the bird with supposedly good bacteria through the Benebac product. It has good bacteria in the product, so you're inoculating them to try to to uh, reinforce the, the good bacteria and you're trying to provide an, uh, an environment for the good bacteria to grow. And so, um, that's what you're doing. And so, and, and with an antibiotic, naturally, if you're concerned, uh, we don't, you know, necessarily, uh, recommend this every time, but certain birds, uh, in certain conditions we do, um, if you're if you're, you're giving an antibiotic, there is a 
uh, chance that it's a double-edged sword. In one one slice, you're 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 killing the bad bacteria, but the possibility of also getting the good bacteria uh, would be there. So during this 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 treatment, it's not hurting the bird at all to give it good bacteria. Um, and the possibility is is that you're going to keep uh, you know increasing the numbers of the good bacteria by providing the in the back. There you go. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good. That was good. Uh, and let's see. Well, we've got it. We got a lot of questions this week. <laughs> well, that's good. That's They're good. Also good too. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Let me see our next one. Okay. Here we go. Uh, question about, uh, oh, question I feel uh, from Pat, a uh, uh, question I failed to ask my vet. Uh, they have a Jende Conyer. Notice the last three months or so, she has a pale yellow feather on her left side. And a blue feather with pale yellow triangle on the right is that normal? Yeah, that can that can um, uh, be uh, normal. Uh, <clears throat> feathers uh, from time to time come in. Uh, their uh, feather coloration can be due to light uh, as it as it goes through uh, the feather architecture and provides a spectrum uh um of color uh, uh dependent upon how that architecture is of the feather uh there can be uh, as the feather uh grows out um it could just be this time uh just the 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 wiring was mixed up a little bit in the feather um actually coming out uh, uh it, it if it, it continues it could be due to just the follicle or the uh itself uh could be a little bit different uh so feather uh coloration can change if it's individual feathers from time to time you may have this molt out and it'll be it'll be um normal next time um, uh, and, and so, so, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, and we'll see this more in older birds. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen it, um, just my experience in older birds, I see, um, uh, more individual feather, um, uh, coloration abnormalities occur, uh, on that. So no, but good. Good question, and it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's if it if it occurs uh, overall, and you have some issue uh, with with uh, a significant number of feathers on the body, uh, then then that would be something to uh, possibly look at, look and see what's going on inside. So that's yeah. not a sign of stress feathers or anything like that, because just... no, no, the stress stress feather usually we have what they call stress bars and feathers, and that's usually uh, during the the growth of the feather in the blood feather stage where there is a um, an increase in 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 in, in, in say corticosterone or uh, some kind of in, in, uh, internal. Uh, 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 the stereo, you know, uh, internal, um, stress that, that, that causes the bird, um, the growth to be interrupted, uh, at, at that, that level. And, and what happens is that the architecture of the feather is, is, um, is, is affected. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's not a, um, a complete, um and um normal architecture and and so you have these lines in the the feathering and uh, that can occur in young birds uh but it can also occur in older birds and during the the, the blood feather development you'll see that in young birds in particular because they have all of their feathers coming in at one time especially all of their so they're they're much more susceptible to that um and and um and so you, that's why uh it's so important to to make sure that the um the birds are 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 have the nutrition that they need and that the 
that the environment is as uh, comfortable as possible for them uh, to pre prevent that uh, or reduce that because it's hard to prevent it. And, and if it does occur, uh, when the new feathers come in, they'll be fine. So it's not a permanent thing by any stretch. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I love that. We have so many uh, small bird questions today. I, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, because, you know, small birds, they've always had that. And people, you know, pay generally that they don't get as much care, but this has proven everything wrong, right? These little budgie mm -hmm. questions and cockatiels. I love it. Um, yeah, I love my budgies. Yes. <laughs> So, so we have They're hormonal right now, by the way. Are they? They're bossy little guys. I have one. I, I love mine dearly. He's just, yeah. he's a firecracker. Um, okay. So we have a, a budgie question from Susan that uh, budgie uh, is on a porch that is enclosed by windows and he gets hot, uh, it gets hot in the summer. So they have an air conditioner to turn it on and it keeps it about 80 degrees. They also have insulated curtains that they can pull uh, when needed. And so she's wondering, uh, what is the coolest temperature that they would be comfortable with in the winter? Uh, they point out that it gets down in 30s and 40s um, on the porch in their area. So, so yeah, keeping the budgie <clears throat> comfortable on this on the porch with. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm more concerned about the heat than I am the cold. Um, uh, the budgie will die like this if it's too hot. I mean, uh, and when you're saying too hot, I mean uh you 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 really don't want it to get uh you know in you know in the shade if it's in the mid 80s that's okay but i i wouldn't want to get it much much higher than that um birds just can't dissipate heat mm. um and they can fluff their feathers they can get the, and and again like a, i've said before birds that accommodate the outside uh they uh i see more down feathers i see more feathers that they that that are you know grow uh in just in my experience i, I know a bird that's outside during the winter here in louisiana and i know and i see birds that come from the inside and i can tell the difference uh just the, the number of you know just the amount of down feathers um and so the so and that's one thing that I wanted as we go through a heat wave here in Louisiana and, and you say, well, that's kind of synonymous heat wave, Louisiana summer. Um, but uh, it is, uh, we normally, it's, it's 91, but we're about 97, 98 degrees right now. So, so heat in birds, it doesn't mix. And so you want to maintain uh, where that's, uh, like I said, uh, a temperate um, environment uh, for them. Uh, 80 uh, degrees or so is, is, is optimum. Um, and uh, you don't want them out where it's hot. And I wanted to mention that since we are in June and we're going forward, uh, you don't want to keep them in the car that's hot uh, any period of time. You don't wanna keep them outside and say, I'm gonna run in and I'm gonna be in for five minutes and you'll go back out and it'll be dead. That's how quick it works. I mean, and so you want to, to uh, keep that uh, in mind. As far as the, how cool it can get, um, you know, I, I would say, I, I know parrots that are outside that are, you know, that have an area that's heated that I've seen them out in snow before, you know, and where there's, they're protected from the environment, meaning the elements and the wind. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I'm not recommending that by any stretch, but I would say you get into the, you know, you're looking at fifties, uh, uh, even the upper forties, those budgies should be, should be fine if they accommodate. Yeah. Okay. And I imagine there's a difference uh, also maybe in like dry heat versus humidity. And like, I know that. Uh, yeah. The, the like one thing. Of, yeah. The humidity can be like, like, yeah, another. you know, the heat index, they call it, yeah. you know, the heat index is like, well, what's the environmental temperature? And then you add the humidity to it. And of course the percentage of humidity, and that's something in Louisiana we're all too familiar with. Okay, it's 91, but we have 100% humidity. So the heat index is 110. 
right? Hmm. Uh, when you add the humidity. Um, and so, and I'm not saying that's correct. Don't, you know, say, well, you know, the heat index really isn't that, but it does elevate the feel like temperature outside. Um, and so, uh, but the, the one thing is, is cars and, 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 and if you have your bird and you're traveling or something like that, and you think you're going to go in quickly, but it's hot outside, um, that birds just cannot, um, I, I, I had this call, um, uh, one time about a macaw in the, and this was at night. And, and that's how, how hot it was and, and in the morning and, and, and how quickly it could occur. These people were moving, right? And yeah. so they were coming through and they had stopped at a, uh, a hotel and they were, they were uh, sleeping. They, had, they drove in late. They kept them a car, car in a van uh, that they were moving or the truck and then um, the cab. And then they slept late that morning. Okay, they come out and the 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 macaw was hyperventilating, and it had it had uh, actually ruptured an air sac. Okay, uh, but it wasn't dead yet, and so they you know the bird was able to be saved. But that's how quickly and how much uh, susceptible birds are to heat, uh, mm -hmm. parrots uh, in particular. Yeah. So just real quick, um, if you do see a bird in heat distress, what can you do immediately? Can you? Uh, well, you, you, you want to try to get it in, in, a, in, a, in a cool environment uh, uh, as, as quickly as possible, um, you know, to try to uh, kind of reduce the, um, we reduce the uh, uh, the external temperature, um, and then you don't want to put cold water on the bird. But if you can, if you can spray the bird with uh, kind of uh, just normal temperature water, that that would that would help kind of dissipate uh, some of the uh, some of the heat, and then also. Uh, try to take it to uh, uh, get it seen because it probably needs uh, fluid therapy and 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 uh, oxygen therapy at that 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 time. Yeah, okay. Okay. that would be something that you would you would want to do uh, as you could do. Yeah. All right, um, and we have a question about avian polyom polyoma virus. Um, what diseases other than I'm sorry, I said that wrong. What diseases, what diseases other than polyomavirus can cause loss of primary and secondary flying feathers and tail feathers, um, feather discoloration, uh, blood in the shaft um, for budgie chicks that are yet to wean, they're about to wean, and they are, are there any treatments that are found to be effective in polyomavirus? As most vets, they've been told uh, nothing can help, so. No, uh kind of feather duster disease and budgies, uh, that, that's typical of polyoma virus. Um, the, the, you say, well, is there anything else that could cause it? Well, uh, again, if, there, if you have budgies that, uh, that have this, this problem, if it's a single budgie, well, this is out, but if, if somebody has multiple budgies, uh, then, then of course, uh, there's, there's the possibility of pathology, uh, being able to identify it. There's also, uh, some, some, some diagnostic tests, uh, that can, can possibly be used, uh, to identify it, um, in the kind of the single, single budgie. Uh, if you say, well, what else could possibly cause this? Um, uh, you could have a, um, uh, what we call a folliculitis, or you could also have a, uh, well, really it's a dermatitis, uh, but you could have uh, kind of a bacterial infection within the, um, that's more generalized over the body that may be affecting the feather growth uh, in these uh, birds. 
uh, in these budgies that have um, dystrophic feathers or abnormal feather growth, uh, as you described, and as very described very well, Laura. The uh, it, you know, when you're looking at this with budgies, that is the uh, polyoma is the most common uh, problem, though uh, that that would would cause this. Uh, we don't see uh, you say, well, what about uh, cytosine beaked feather feather disease, circovirus? Um, that's just something that we don't uh, normally see uh, that's uh, uh, affecting uh, budgies um, on that that would cause dystrophic feathers uh, in that. And then this, I don't know what age of budgie this would be, but uh, usually it affects, uh, polyoma affects younger, younger birds, but uh, in this manner. Okay, okay. Um, let's see what else we've got. Okay, so we have a question about um, from Sharon about avian gastric yeast. How is sorry, how is avian gastric yeast transmitted, and how is it detected and treated? Good question. Ah, uh, well, that's a <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, avian gastric yeast um, uh, it has been called megabacteria, um, and that was kind of. Uh, kind of misnamed because it is a yeast um, and it is uh, a uh, common problem that we see, a common disease condition that we see in budgies on the budgie train today. And, and uh, but it can occur in other birds. And the, what's the first question on that? Uh, how is it transmitted? How, how is, is it, it transmitted? And how is it treated? Yeah. No, fecal oral. Uh, so fecal oral. So what's fecal oral? Or it, it, it's through uh, ingestion uh, is how it's transmitted uh, through contaminated feces. Uh, it's shed um, by other birds or regurgitation uh, where, uh, say, uh, a, a, a parent is feeding the young. So it can be uh, transmitted uh, either way, but it's through ingestion uh, is how it's transmitted, which is how it is made. It, it, it can kind of disseminate through an aviary uh, or a breeding facility or between one bird and another bird. So that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so what is the other question? How is, oh, it, uh, how is it treated? Did we, um, how is it treated? How do you detect it? How do you treat it? No, how you detect it, uh, you can detect it uh, through, uh, it's, it's somewhat difficult uh, to detect. Uh, it's, there's a lot of, there's a number of tests that we use that are not perfect. Um, one is uh, where we can actually uh, take a, a swab of the crop and we can do a stain on that. And it is very identifiable because it's so large. It's a yeast, not a bacteria. That's why they called it megabacteriosis. And so it's big, mega. Uh, and so that's one way. Also, you can do a... a kind of a stain the feces or a swab from the cloaca. It's not always shed. It's not always there. Um, birds, what they say, going light, which they are losing weight and the, the keel is very prominent. So this, this is what you can see. Mm. And then um, when that, that is, that, that's one of the, the issues, the birds are regurgitating they can they can uh, regurgitate. Uh, they can have uh, um, the, the 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 stool is kind of watery diarrhea, um, and so those are some of the clinical signs that we see: going light, kind of regurgitation, uh, watery stool. We can do those tests. Not perfect by any stretch. We may miss it, uh, and what the uh, the best uh, way, and I know that they've been working on some PCR tests, and so we're, we're working to get better at trying to identify it. 
but if they do a necropsy and they uh, have a bird that um, has uh, uh, avian gastric yeast, uh, they'll look for it between the true stomach and the ventriculus, the proventriculus and the ventriculus, which is called, uh, well, it's the isthmus. Uh, between those two is where it's normally found, but they can look for it within the stomach. And uh, that's, that's a better um, way to uh, get a more definitive idea if it's, if it's found. Treatment, uh, difficult, difficult. I think at this point, amphotericin B, uh, an antifungal agent, uh, is... Uh, what is considered to be your best bet of trying to, uh, I wouldn't say uh, clear the organism, but to try to keep it under control. Uh, so that's, that should answer that question. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got our final question or getting there uh, from Cindy about their blue crown conure. 20 years um, is having problems with balance on her left side and is also very lethargic. Um, they've been to the vet, the heart uh, and heart and respiratory have all been ruled out, but no diagnosis. So they're eating, drinking, but keep, but keeps her eyes closed and has a left talon issue and possibly a left eye issue. So they're wondering, could this be a stroke? So balance problems, um, heart and respiratory all seem to be fine. Yeah. Um, yes, it could be. It could be. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's very possible. Um, and so, uh, that kind of, that answers that I, I would say that, um, I'm sure that there was, uh, uh, appears that a very good workup was done on that, but it's very difficult, uh, to determine if a bird has a stroke or not. Um, the one thing that you can do if you have seizure activity after a stroke, you can give it anti-seizure medication. Mm -hmm. um, if there's pathology to the brain or damage to brain damage associated with the ischemia or the lack of blood flow that occurs during a stroke uh, and the brain goes, ah, I don't have any oxygen and, it, and that part of the brain dies, then, then you have the paralysis. Uh, some of it's transitory depending on, you know, we don't know people that have had temporary paralysis with strokes, humans, uh, but then we know people that have never recovered from that. And it's just dependent upon how long uh, that, that, that tissue does not have oxygen um, in the brain. Um, but uh, it's hard to diagnose a stroke because an MRI can diagnose a stroke and we have diagnosed that in an African gray uh, parrot, but after three days, two to three days, even an MRI cannot tell the difference between normal tissue and that was that was affected by a stroke. So you only have a short window to be able to identify that. Um, and so that's that's what uh, what you're looking at here uh, on that. So so it could possibly be that. Um, and um, yeah. So with, with bird strokes, is there, if you notice a stroke, is there, is there any kind of PT you can do to, you know, kind of like humans, you can kind of work back up maybe some physical therapy, something, some therapeutics to kind of. Oh, always. You yeah. can always uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, work and, and uh, with the, the bird, depending on, uh, on how much it'll allow you to do that. Uh, to try to uh, uh, help with the um, muscle um, function and uh, strength in the areas that have deficits. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. just trying to imagine what yeah. that would be like. Like, would yeah. you have it step up on your hand with the left the left foot over and over, kind of like build it up, exactly. or would you leave it alone? <laughs> it's all yeah. yeah, yeah, or 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 a little wheel, you know. <laughs> It'll, our weight bearer and I want you to stand on this leg and yeah that's that would be an interesting physical therapy is tough not every not you know not it every person can handle physical therapy you know you have some that are a little tougher than others and it doesn't matter you don't have to be big and 
look look tough. You could be the the smallest person in the room, but have the the most you know tenacious uh, attitude toward physical right. therapy and overcome it. You know. There you That's, go. Yeah. Build those away sometimes, right? Yes. Well, okay. So we 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 run through our hour here. So um, that went by as fast as it always does every Friday with you. I mean, it does. I mean, and, and we, I don't know. I, I tell you, I, you know, I'm sure the questions I just every, every week. So fantastic. Yeah. Well, well, if we didn't get to your question today and we, we did have quite a few questions, we'll, uh, we'll try to shoot an email uh, answer for you to you. So, uh, and then you'll be back on with when are we uh, when are we going to rejoin you uh, for another episode of Ask the Vet? Is it in we're we're in July? I think in July we'll see. July, you. July, yeah. Let me see. Uh, I know this. 21st. I just want to make sure you know it. Twenty first, twenty first, July twenty first. So we'll go. be back. What's that? We'll be back. We'll, we'll be back. back. That's the, right. The twenty first, yes. July twenty first. So just uh, just a. Uh, just a little over a month away, we'll be back with with Dr. Yes, yes. And in the meantime, though, I have to announce we have a winner of today's giveaway, and I have to say, this is a special giveaway, an extra special giveaway, because we're gonna give away the banana Nutri berries that come in this really cool tin. And also, look, it's like stackable, so if you buy multiples, you could have a golden. L- Laura, our attendees for this webinar, <laughs> or the Ask the Vet webinars deserve those golden tins I'm i know right with all of their their questions and uh you know and the things that they share it is well deserved yeah i mean this is just so cool it has just like it's i just love it uh and then you know if you have a i'm just imagine my my like cockatiels it's like reflection just so they can see them <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Laying themselves in there. um all right so this is going to go out to today's winner of the banana nutri berries, the brand new product from Lefebvre is going to be Pat Maraska. I hope I said that right. Pat, congratulations. You're going to be receiving uh, banana nutri berries in this awesome tin, as well as another uh, Lefebvre product of your bird's choice. So hopefully that makes your weekend that this makes my weekend. I'm going to put these in a nice little area here. <laughs> so, um, so that's it. That's all we got today. And then I want to also say that for next week, we're going to be on with Dr. Lamb next Friday, and she's going to go over symptoms and what they can mean. So kind of piggybacks off of your rep, your webinar today, <laughs> symptoms and what they can mean, right? There you go. There you go. All right. Um, all right. On that note, I hope everyone is just, I hope everyone's enjoying a, a good summer so far. Um, we answer the heat questions, which is awesome to kind of take us into the, the, the hot, hot days of summer. Um, and, and also, Hall. also, Laura, I want to say, make sure everybody protects those birds against predators, whether it's cats, yes. raccoons, whatever's out in the summer. And if they're outside, make sure uh, the last thing we want is to uh, treat a, a bird that's been attacked. Um, that's and true. It's, it's good that we can even do that. So uh, those predators are out there and uh they're looking uh looking at the bird so keep that in mind yes maybe just hang out there with your bird when you're out when your bird's outside yeah there you well, go the chair, get a good summer reading book and there you go all right <laughs> yes 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 very much so you know what i actually I, i'm i'm gonna try to do a um just real quick I, i'm trying to put together I, I, um if anyone has any summer reading um suggestions that have bird like in birds in the plot line i'd love to hear about it because I'd love to put out like a summer reading list for, for bird lovers. So it could be yeah. parents, it could be birds in general, but I'd love to hear about that. So, all yes. right. Um, on that note, I got to say goodbye to everybody. And thank you so much for joining us on this very special episode. And uh, it wasn't that exciting. We got to do our first like product um, unboxing together here, Dr. Tolley. So thank you. Yes, me. that was, that was great. That was great. And, and we both just happened to have our bananas. And Pat, so and Pat won, won the, uh, the prize. There, there you go. go. All right, banana nutri berries. All right, thank you, Laura. All right, have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Great questions. See you next time. Bye bye. Yes, all the best to you and your flock, and everyone stay safe till next time. Bye. Bye.